Hi ho, Larissa here. Today we're going to tour the design center and find out what choices I was presented for my home and to share with you the experience that I had. And I'm going to also share with you our final tally, just so you can get an idea of the money that was involved here. All right, shall we get started? So we walked into the design center to this lovely reception area, was greeted and we came over here to relax. Now, what's great about these little touches at the design center here had is every corner, they took the opportunity to highlight the options that they offer in the homes. For instance, they have this lovely little electric fireplace here and the surround would be something that was probably offered in their more high-end homes, which I, of course, did not purchase. At any rate, this little reception area was very cutely styled and it was a fun little introduction to the design center. So I'm going to take you through each section of the design center and explain to you the choices that we were given and what we ended up choosing. So right here is an example of a gorgeous freestanding tub and a beautiful double shower. Aren't they lovely? Look at the tile work and the chrome and the beautiful glass door and none of this is available in my home because I chose a much cheaper one. So shall we move on? This cabinetry, sink, countertop, it's all available to actually choose for your personal home including the glass subway tile backsplash there. So we're going to head into the bathroom area first and right here along this wall is where we got to choose the sinks that would be in our bathrooms this would be our guest bathroom and our master bath and the toilets that would be in our bathroom now me i'm going to be honest with you i really didn't understand the difference between the toilets so i took the standard one which is this one on the right um, which was just included with the price of our home i also took the undermount circle sink Again, that was just included with our home and I just did not see where above the counter sinks or the square sink was worth spending any extra money on. This sink and this toilet were perfectly acceptable to me and my husband. Now, if we walked on over here to the left, we were presented with the pedestal sinks that was our option for our powder room, which is downstairs. Now, the circular one here on the left was included, or we could upgrade to one of these square sinks. Again, we really just didn't see what these sinks offered for the extra cost. So we did go for the standard pedestal sink here on the end. And I believe the standard oval mirror was part of the package as well. Now, they are showing you different versions of lights above the sink. None of them are the standard one, and I will show you that later in the lighting section. Now, real quick, let's go over the shower heads. They did offer upgraded shower heads from the standard ones that come in the package. Again, we were like, that's okay. If we want fancy shower heads, we can get those down the line very, very easily. And none of these really scream to me, give me the shower head. So, however, you can imagine that anybody wants to particularly make sure their hardware matches their design aesthetic and they had a really really good selection here so the standard would be over here this little chrome and it looks standard it looks cheap to look at that shower head i mean seriously no but of course nobody wants the standard we want to pick our own hardware to match our design aesthetic and we were presented with what I consider some really good choices. So you had your um, bright, shiny chrome, and you had your uh, more brushed nickel look. Oh, well, brushed nickel would be over here. I guess they're both brushed nickel. Just, you know, if you want a square shower head or a circular shower head and whatnot. And I think this is like a bright bronze or a brushed gold. I believe it was this one. Yes, it would be this one, which was a um, oiled rub bronze look, and I, I like it. It didn't need to be fancy. It just needed to match our aesthetic. So moving on, 
let's make a quick turn here we're going to stay in bathroom land now if you'll notice one thing that you'll also find in the design centers they will also show examples of the different flooring that they offer throughout the design center and so we here we got some different options in tile flooring and again regrettably with our particular model we had very basic options to choose from in the bathroom but i just thought i'd show you what was available for other homes <laughs> not ours we're showing you walking glass interiors with some neat subway tile what the heck is that anyway you've got your shower niches which are also becoming a a, a popular item to add to your shower walls here's another example of a undermount circular sink which is standard which is what we got we have a tub that's not available for us we have some square windows which are available in some of the home floor plans i really 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 like this stone floor of the shower this actually looks like a more modern wet room where the shower and the freestanding tub are together in a glass enclosure so you really have some awesome options if you're willing to pay in the design centers for a builder grade home and let's see here we've got some more tile options and shower types let's move on so we stop looking at all the bathroom options that I do not have access to. So right here is the wall o cheap. Um, this is vinyl flooring, which is as cheap as you can get. You could probably save money and even possibly get a credit on other areas in your home if you use this vinyl flooring, sheet vinyl flooring, not to be confused with luxury vinyl plank flooring, which is coming up later. It gives the approximate look of wood and tile. I don't think it's really going to fool anybody. Over here, however, is some options for wood look tile. I didn't choose it for mine, but it's it's an option. We go down here. And this is the carpet area. Now, I am not a wall-to-wall -wall carpet person, but a lot of people are, especially if they have children. Builders in general usually get uh, maybe a C minus on their carpet options, but I don't think that they were too bad. And from what I read, if you can upgrade your carpet pad underneath your carpet it actually makes your carpet a lot nicer so that's what we did in this case due to the builder grade options we could not get luxury plank vinyl on our stairs we had to choose carpet so we choose a pattern which i will put up here on the screen there were lots and lots of beautiful options here to choose from and i might have choose this beautiful basket weave up here which i thought was really pretty so that was carpeting I'm gonna skip this in the middle for the moment, the different tile options that they have to move on down to more flooring. What is really awesome that I enjoyed when I went to the design center is I came up to this wall. Our house does not offer the option in order to get engineered wood flooring, but it was, it was neat to look at, especially when I turned around on this side and realized this was the luxury vinyl plank options that they had and I could not tell the difference between these and the manufactured hardwood versions so I was really stoked to see how awesome the luxury vinyl plank is now I've heard that it's great in water areas it is much more durable than engineered wood in kitchens and bathrooms and so I was very excited to hear that not only was this the less expensive option but it was the one that would last longer and it was to me indistinguishable from the real thing so I was happy and I will put up here on the screen the one that we ended up choosing for our home and prices so this back wall here we really didn't go over very much because we did not have it in our budget to tile the bathrooms or the kitchen none of this tile was part of our choosing but as you can see we've got different floor tile options here or wall tile options or both they had some really 
really neat patterns. I mean, I really think right here, this one here, that's kind of reminds me of grass wallpaper. I love this one as well. And I might use something similar in upgrading my guest bath down the line, but it was neat to look at just like in the other bathroom areas we were in earlier. It's neat to look at all the lovely stuff that we can't have. <laughs> so those were all the tile options we did not take. So let's talk about some tile options we did have. In this case, the only tile option that we really chose was the backsplash for the kitchen and they had a myriad of choices they had plastic subway tile here they had little glass tile stripey things i'm not sure what they're called um they had little button tiles which were kind of cool they had these okay so Apparently they had moved, they moved stuff. Look at this guys. So here is all those button tiles I was telling you about. And here's some neat stripey tiles right here, but apparently they moved them by the time they moved the camera for this tour. Also, if you'll look over here on the right, there are some really neat natural stone options that make it look like that your wall was made of stone. They're going to change now when I change camera angles. Woo! Magic! All the buttons are gone now. But we still have our glass stripies. Lots of glass stripies and the options in the stone have changed. Oh! I found the buttons. Oh! I found them! Look at that! I wasn't really fond of the buttons, but they do come in many different colors and they might be somebody's taste. There is my rocks that I really kind of liked earlier that you could do in your shower floor if you chose. So as you can see, we got some more different patterns and we've got our octagonal, both in really small button sizes and slightly larger ones. So there was lots of options to choose from. Now, what we ended up choosing is something a little more sedate over in this area, simply because I didn't want my backsplash to be a focal point. I wanted it to be the background music to the symphony. And I wanted it to last many years and not be too trendy. One that we chose is over somewhere in this area it was a square porcelain tile that had a travertine marble look to it. And I'll put it up on the screen here now for you to see. That tile ended up melding the look of our cabinetry with the look of the quartz countertop that we chose. So let us continue down the design center. Now over in this corner, we got to choose our interior door styles. Now. I can't pull these out for you to see, but I'm going to put up here the interior design style that we chose for our doors. I chose it because it's a classic style and also it reminds me of my grandparents because they had a very old fashioned house that had these door styles. So it was a homage to them. They also offer, if you have an upstairs and downstairs, different baluster and spindle types. We chose a really basic one. And if you see my tour of the model home video, which I will link up here in a card, you will see that we ended up only going for a very small amount of stairway that actually had this. So we just kind of went for the default one you see here on the end with wooden spindles with a gunstock stain. So we also had an option right here on the wall. These weird looking Z things are our options of our different type of trim that we wanted around the doors and along the baseboards, etc. And so they do have some more traditional style ones, something a little funky like these three staircase looking ones. We just chose a flat nondescript style with a thicker baseboard. Stay tuned, I'm gonna be putting a faux wood treatment on these baseboards and trim to make it look like that I actually have wood trim instead of this white MDF. 
So one thing that was neat is that we really did not have to pay a premium for any particular hardware for our exterior and interior doors. We just had to choose the one that we liked best. The only premium that they had was if you wanted a deadbolt lock that came with a code that you could program in instead of using a key, which we did not choose. Most of the time we'll be going in and out through the garage anyway. We did choose two main things we want with a little more of a traditional look. We also went for the interior handle types that are kind of lever. We did not want the doorknobs. There is nothing worse than having your arms full of stuff and not being able to turn a doorknob. I like the idea of just being able to elbow a lever and getting the door open. So that's the one we chose. So we kind of just glossed over the lighting choices my husband and I, because the default ones were actually acceptable to us. Lighting is so easy, guys, to upgrade on your own later on. Do not pay for upgraded lighting. To me, it is worth not putting the cost of your lights into your mortgage. Forget that. So we chose for exterior lights the standard that they were offering, which was this lantern style right here, which was fine by us. In our oiled bronze choice, these were obviously other choices that we had for the exterior lighting. For our over the bathroom, I'd mentioned earlier that we found the over the bathroom mirror lights, the default ones to be just acceptable. And these were the default ones we were offered. We either had the oiled bronze ones or the brushed chrome ones. One day I decide I'm sick of them, I'll get a different light, but those were fine by me. These were all the different decorative options that they offered for over the mirrors and the bathrooms. And then of course we also chose the pendant lights over our island. They have all those pendant lights up here on the ceiling. All these other models, unlike us, would have also lighting over the dining room table, etc. So they had some chandelier options and whatnot. We chose a very basic matte black pendant light for over our island that I will show you right here. And I will be linking all of these as well in the description below. Okay, so when it comes to appliances, you can also put the cost of your laundry room appliances into your design center choices as well. And that's what me and my husband chose to do. So we are going to get a front loader washer and dryer without the pedestal stands because we have them now and we've decided that we don't like them. They're annoying. They get dirty. They're not as useful as I thought they would be. We think it'd be a lot more useful to actually build a shelf above these if these were sitting on the ground and not on the pedestals. One interesting thing about the appliance packages is that right now we have no idea what appliances we're going to get because of the supply chain issues going on due to COVID-19. We are only guaranteed a model type or better. Okay, they will not charge us extra if they have to go up in model quality, but they will not go below the original model that would have come in our package normally. Here's another example of an electric fireplace and it's around. I'm not that fond of electric fireplaces. I chose not to have one put into my house even though it was an option. I want to upgrade down the line to a ventless gas fireplace. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff. Ooh, we're gonna look at all the model kitchens now. So there was lovely model kitchens for us to look at, different cabinetry types, different hardware types, different backsplash types, even different window covering types. So we had the opportunity to choose window treatments in advance, which would have been basic white faux wood blinds and plantation shutters, as you see here. So we decided not to get any of the packages for window treatments up ahead because it was just the two options. We'll do our own window treatments. So let's just look around. We did opt for the gas range. We hope that we'll get a really nice one like this one. And we will have the much maligned <laughs> microwave over the range option. But if you look in our model home tour, you will see that we really have a small kitchen and 
to me is the most efficient use of space. Suck it, the designers who are against it. Here is an option that wasn't given us, a gas fireplace. Oh, I love real flames, but we will have one at some point. Here's another view of a, a model kitchen with different cabinetry, different countertops. This looks like it has what they call a bull nose instead of a square countertop. To, and this is showing a different type of edge as well. This has got induction cooktop, which was an option that we did not take because we want gas. Here is the gorgeous window that will be over our oven in our kitchen, giving us lovely natural sunlight into the countertops. If you really want to see this in its full glory, check out our model home tour video. Ah, I love it. We turned down the option for a double fridge. I can imagine that families with a lot of children could really use this. We are not one of them. We are empty nesters. And let's, we are probably going to have almost the same exact sink, which is a stainless steel under the mount sink. We are not going to have brushed nickel faucets. We are going to have oil rubbed bronze. Let's come around here. Another model kitchen. It's just so cool to walk through these. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of how cool it is to walk through an Ikea, right? And see all the stuff that they sell set up in all its glory. And then you get home and realize that you have to spend five hours putting it together. But in this case, we don't have to do that. The builders are going to put it together for us. So here's an example for a chef kitchen with a double oven. We were not given the option of a double oven, but we were given the option of an oven with a microwave recessed in the cabinetry, which we did not take because that would take away needed cabinetry. Here's a gigantic island, which is not going to be far off from the island size that we're going to have in our house. However, we will have a sink in the island, not a cooktop. And this is kind of a neat little quartz countertop that is supposed to resemble marble. Some cool backsplash. I guess you can get plantation sh shutters in black in other houses. We were not given that option. We were told only white. Either that or it is a supply chain issue. They had sinks that were no not white and stainless steel. They had them in other colors as well, which was kind of neato. Did I just say neato? I did. Groovy. All right, so let's take a look here. These are the wall choices that we were given. This is for the whole house, including the ceiling. You can upgrade to have focal point walls in other colors, which I don't believe in focal point walls, so that wasn't even a thing. What was great about this is that the designer that was offered to us, who was awesome, by the way, I loved her, was able to show us each one of these paints in a huge paint chip that was the size of a piece of paper instead of just a little bitty square. We were able to hold it up to our options, such as our flooring and our cabinetry and our cabinet tops and stuff to see what the paint colors looked like in compared to the other choices that we were choosing. She also showed what the paint color looked like up against a plain white background to help us choose our paint color. So we did end up choosing Sherman Williams Softer Tan because I wanted that look of somebody had painted that house and perhaps it had aged. I might not actually get that look, but that was my thought process behind choosing the color that we had, that it would look like it had been there for a long time. It's funny how you see everything and you just go, well, it's white, 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 and white, but it really isn't once you start looking at all your other design choices. So here it is. This is the moment we've all been waiting for during throughout this whole tour. And you might have actually fast forwarded to this point because this was the only point you wanted to see. This was the kitchen part of the design center where you could choose from probably hundreds, maybe thousands of combinations to give your unique kitchen. So 
the first thing that you're going to look at is probably your cabinetry style itself. So they did offer lots of different styles. As you can see here, you had some plain front styles, you had some shaker style front, you had some other more molding, more fancy or more traditional styles. Within each of these styles here, and some of them you would have to look really close to see the difference. For instance, it, this is shaker style, but this is shaker style with just a little bit of a oomph along the edge. Behind each one of these doors, and these are working cabinet doors, are different finishes that each one of these styles come in. So it was really neat to choose, but I can be honest with you, I already had in my head what I wanted, and I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people would, and I wanted something that looked a little rustic and a little not too fancy, certainly nothing like this, and I wanted, I guess, basically shaker style, so that's what I ended up going for. I went for this, and the maple had a toffee stained finish. We also climbed any open shelving options that we had and we declined any glass front cabinets. I didn't have any problem or any objection to glass front cabinets. I actually think they're really neat, but I didn't want to pay the expense. I'm going to be honest with you. We chose very basic hardware in our oiled bronze knobs for the cabinets and an oiled bronze pull for the drawers. I figure if I don't like them, that's also an easy change. But as you can see, they had more modern types with square, different metal types and different shapes, or you could simply go with no hardware at all and install it on your own later on if you choose to do that. Now in the countertop options, the first options people are always gonna look for, of course, is gonna be granite or quartz. They did not offer marble. You could get marble look quartz, but not actual marble. Now let's go over to the granite options. Now, as you can see, they had lots of different colors and I think they even had a few down here in the, in the drawers that were not up here on display. You could get different colors, different stone types, different patterns. There's different types of colored flex that are in the stone. I have never been a fan of busy countertops with patterns like this so I was really trying to get away from this altogether. However, as I mentioned before, our bathroom options for our bathtub and our shower are so awful <laughs> that I'm not paying any upgrades at all in the bathroom so that I can feel good renovating down the line. We went with the default countertops that our builder offered which surprisingly enough is not laminate. It is actually granite and these were, I believe these two here were the default options. And I went with Ubatuba, which is the darker of the two. Right now I'm kind of regretting that. I'm sort of thinking maybe I should have gotten the lighter, but the reason why I went with the dark because it was less busy. But now I'm thinking is the dark too dark? Don't you hate when you second guess your things? But the guess what? If I want to change my option now, it's going to cost us $500. So we're not doing it. We'll stick with it because if I hate it, I can rip it out later on. If I had chosen this at the beginning, I can guarantee you I would be saying right now, I really wish I hadn't chosen this, I chose the dark one because I, they're really neither one of them are my favorite. This is too dark and this is too busy. So at any rate, both of them, I wouldn't say free because I'm paying for the house, but both of them did not cost extra to install in the guest bathroom and the master bathroom. What did cause extra, which was my actual choice, which was quartz, not granite. And in this case, it was this one, I believe, and I'll be putting a picture up of what it actually looks like, get a little more close up. Basically, I chose it because it was a flatter color. It was not very busy, and I actually kind of like the concrete look of it. So that is what we went for, was a gray concrete look cord. So as you can see, there was other choices, including only pattern that I like, which was that kind of like night sky with the lightning across. I still like that, but it was too expensive and I just took my gray countertop instead. All right, now you could, if you wanted to save a little money, they did offer laminate types as well, which might give you some more options. For instance, laminate can imitate the look of wood if you wanted a butcher block look. Think laminate 
can imitate marble, it can imitate granite, it can imitate quartz, and it can imitate things that are not available in any other style. And laminate these days is actually a very good option. And it's not like the laminate of your mother's kitchen in the 70s, 80s, or 90s. Depending on how old you are and your mother, don't tell me. But it is definitely a good option. The one thing that's going to keep people from choosing laminate, even though it is an attractive and less expensive yet durable option, is you still can't get an undermount sink with laminate. There are a few people out there that are coming up with ways to do that, but in general, in the building industry, the only way to get an undermount sink is with granite or quartz because they have the strength to support the weight of that undermount sink, whereas laminate is actually put on top of MDF or particle board and it would just fall apart not too much longer. Now in these drawers, and I can't show them to you, every one that you open up, it's a sink type. So you can choose undermount, overmount, and then there's even kind of like a flush mount option. And you can also choose, do you want a single bowl or a double bowl? Do you want a really deep bowl, which is a little extra than the typical size bowl? And we paid the upgrade to go for a little deeper bowl in our kitchen sink. And then of course, here's your uh, final choice in your kitchen, which is your faucet types. We want for the old bronze, once again, shucker of the moment. I do like these goose head tall type of sink faucets. I don't like the shorter type, but maybe other people prefer that type. I believe this is just for a little bar sink or a little extra sink that you would have on a large kitchen island. Those are for houses greater than mine. And this was the basic one that they offered us. And I'm not doing it. You could probably get that for $6.99 at Walmart for crying out loud. I did opt to get the under the mount soap dispenser link and I am going to be using a special attachment that they sell on Amazon and I will link that for you that instead of having a container underneath this soap pump underneath the sink that you constantly have to refill you can actually get a tube that will go down into a dish washing liquid refill bottle and just screw it in there you don't have to refill I'm I'm all for that less work for me now that ends our tour of the design center tell me what you think i really would like to know because this has been an amazing journey for me i knew nothing about buying a new built home prior to this experience and i'm wondering who else is out there that's going through this experience and is looking at my videos to learn more about it i would love to touch bases with you let's chat i promise you if you post in the comments i'm going to come along and i'm going to answer bye bye bye